Well, hello, everybody. This is Javi. I am your Global Brand Champion in Aclaro. And today, I am also the host of this new multilingual TV show called Malablados by Javi and our localization friends. Thanks, everybody, for being here. This is the first edition of the show. And uh, 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 we, we have an idea of doing this show because uh, we were talking the other day, the guys at Multilingual and I, and we're like, what kind of show can we do so that we can add some value and, 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 add, and create a format that is not normally done in our industry? And we came up with the idea of doing a, a, a show that is uh, uh, very interactive, call it that way. A show in which uh, I will invite one of our localization friends and then we will set up a topic, set a topic in, to discuss about it. And uh, as I said before, in the video that you probably saw before in the multilingual publication, it's nothing related to localization processes. It's related to leadership topics, things that need to be discussed, things that can help you grow as a person, right? In a very informal, fun way between friends. So we're kicking this show today off with my friend, Carrie Fisher. And you guys are going to tell me, but didn't you say Jeff Beatty? My friend Jeff Beatty, which is leading the localization uh, at Mozilla, is one of my closest friends in the industry as well. But he called me yesterday night and he said, Javi, I'm so sick. You should have, you, should, you guys should have heard the messages he was sending me. Poor guy couldn't, couldn't even, even, even talk. Nothing COVID related, fortunately. But he called me and said, like, I'm so sorry that I cannot be here with you today. So... Can you call someone else? I said, who else am I going to call other than my lovely Princess Leah of the industry, Carrie Fisher? Hi, Carrie, you're here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Mwah, thank you for being here. Thank Welcome. You for being here. My yes, pleasure. Is, yeah, thanks so much. Thanks so much. It was so funny, guys. Yesterday, we were like, I was like jogging. And the multilingual people were calling me like, dude, what are we going to do? It's like, okay. On the middle of my run, I pick up my phone. Carrie, do you want to jump in? It didn't take a second to be here. So thank you very much. <laughs> and today we're kicking this off today, as I was saying, with, um, with a topic that we thought it would be interesting for you guys uh, to listen to. Uh, most of us are employees of a company. Most of us work under uh, a boss. Most of us uh, work in, a, in an environment with other colleagues in which we have to come and present some ideas, some problems or we might have to face management uh, because they might not be right in what they're telling you, right? So I, so I said, okay, let's, let's talk, let's ask a few questions uh, to our, to our uh, let's talk about this, uh, let's create a few questions and talk about this here live, like in friends in a very friendly way and, uh, and discuss, and discuss. So Carrie, what do you think? What is your idea about this, about this whole thing? When you asked me, what did I respond? I'm like, are you kidding? Shitty bosses? That's my specialty. This will be like therapy for me. <laughs> Happy to I join. Love it. I love it. And guys, you guys listening to us, don't forget that this is not the BBC. All right? We are allowed to swear here. <laughs> I, I just swore. <laughs> I couldn't wait to say that. I couldn't wait to say that. So um, as I said, uh, Kerry, can you do, I mean, I know everybody knows you. You're one of the, I mean, you're one of the people that People love the most in this industry, but still for those who don't know you, can you just give us a quick introduction of you? Sure. Um, Carrie Fisher. I'm the Globalization Services Manager at Subway and been in the industry for a long time and also very um, heavily involved in women in localization as a volunteer. Love that organization. So thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, are you, you, are you one of the founding members? I wanted to ask you, and I forgot to ask this. Is Anna? Is, is, I'm not is one of the founding members. Um, so it was the three amigas. The, the and um, sorry, and then I go into Spanish. Um, I was one of the first board members. So uh, oh, okay. Linda Rosalind and I um, joined really early, and we were uh, two of the first board members on Women in Loke a long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, you, you're so young. So... Carrie, the idea of the show is that I'm going to ask you, or we're going to be discussing a few questions that I have here. And then we have, we have some friends here that have joined us. Today's not so many, but then we're going to pass the mic to them. And, the, and then is when our reputation is going to go down the drain when they ask us questions that we cannot 
that we cannot answer to, okay? Right. So let me kick this off because our discussion today, as I said, is about uh, how to challenge your boss, how to go to him and tell him questions, right? And the first thing that I was thinking when, when I was writing a bit of I, I, the questions today, I was thinking about leadership, right? And uh, confronting a boss can be different depending on how that boss leads, right? To me, to my understanding, and, and I know little, I am only 38 since Sunday, uh, uh, I've seen in my short career as a professional, two types of leaderships, and I've worked with them in other industries and in other places, right? First type of leadership is this kind of boss, director, you know, who is like a, like, it would be like a shepherd, right? Who is like behind the, the you know, with the stick behind the, 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 the cattle, like making sure they don't go outside of the, of, the, of, the, of the line that they should go, right? And then there's this other type of leadership in which the shepherd goes first and he goes opening the road for the cattle behind, right? And I'm not comparing us to cattle, but it's to cattle, but it's a funny comparison, right? So my first question to you, Kerry, is, is there really fear for the leader? Or, what, or, 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 or do we by default take an approach to leaders based on fear and submission? What do you think? That's a good question. I think it might depend on how old you are. Oh. I think leadership has changed over the years and its approach, you know, as employees. And I also can only speak from the client side. So, Javi, you can speak from the LSP side. But, um, gosh, I hope not. Not anymore, right? Although I bet if people have been burned by a few leaders in the past, there might be some residual fear. Yeah. Um, for us, I think localization people really face a similar challenge no matter where they work. People don't understand what we do. And in many situations, yeah. you find yourself in a new job or you got a new boss. You've got to be prepared, right, to have that two slide PowerPoint that explains what you do and why you're valuable. I've got mine on my hard drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> managers change out all the time. I think in the past four years at Subway, I've had seven managers. Yeah, um, two, you know, five of them in the last two years. But I will say, I don't think I've ever been fearful or felt I needed to be submissive in any way. Because I think mm -hmm. we hopefully we all realize that we bring huge value to the company, and I think the people that hire us recognize that as well. So you've been lucky with leadership and with management so far here, so, which is good, right? But okay, yeah. then let me go deeper into what you said before you, because you told us you were going to come here to give shit about leadership before. So can you tell us one, one bad experience that you had maybe? Like, I mean, you can, you can make it a little bit milder, eh? but tell us if you don't mind. I have some in the past as well, not in this industry, but I have, I have in the past. Eh? Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, when I left Silicon Valley to go to bodybuilding.com, I picked up oh. my family, which was, I mean, me and my son, right? Uh, moved to Boise, uh, worked for this guy who in the interview process was amazing. He was warm. He was welcoming. Can't wait to get you here. We want you for your experience. You, you know, well, uh, the first few weeks I got there, there was like, it was Jekyll and Hyde. He was a completely different person. He was belittling. He was disrespectful. Didn't listen. Um, even told me that he was not my, th that I was not his first choice when he hired oh. me, shit like that, right? And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing the, here? The empathy right? of my yeah. shoes, right? Yeah, like the empathy oh. of my shoes, the level of empathy God. of my shoes. My God. It, yeah. So I, you know, I would go home and I would cry. You know? Oh my God. Yeah, it was terrible. And I, I was seriously considering moving back to Silicon Valley, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, back to traffic and everything else that goes with it. But um, no, I stuck with it. And I actually, um, I went to his boss which I'd never done before, but I've never gone around my manager to talk badly about him, but I, I had enough and mm -hmm. it just turned out that um, mm -hmm. he was on probation and I had no idea. Oh. Other people had complained as well. And so he got fired the next week. <laughs> <laughs> Boom in your face. I like that. One. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one. You got to speak up like for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a, that's a great first question. Like, thank you. And um, I thought about as well about asking you the following. Um, you know, you've been in the industry or working for a few years, and then you you start in a job, and then uh, you know how to get shit done. You know how to do one thing, 
And then suddenly you come up to the first meeting or the second meeting with your boss and he's telling you, no, 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 we cannot do this. No way. No, no, no. And say like, dude, you are completely wrong. So you can, you can get into situations with management in which you know they're completely wrong and bad. But in your case, how do you face that situation? How would you come to your boss and say, hey, man, you're fucked up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Please listen to me because I am the professional. How, how would you handle those situations? Luckily, we're funny people, aren't we? I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> And I also think we're authentic people and people recognize that. So I have always used humor to break the ice, calm everyone down. You know, like you said, with a name like Carrie Fisher, I can fall back on Princess Leia jokes and, you know, using the force, whatever. Um, yeah. So I've used lines like I've looked into my crystal ball called analytics and found we really should be translating into Thai or yeah. whatever. Um, just presenting the facts and relying on industry research-based firms to show my managers what we should be looking at and why. Usually it's just yeah. a matter of educating them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Localization, I think, is such a place of the unknown if you're not knee-deep in it like we are. Yeah. And it's really important to feel, to make management feel comfortable. And yeah. if you're seen as open and inviting that conversation, I think that's a challenge that can be overcome. Over you have, overcome. Do, I know you for a few years already. You're my friend. You know that I love you so much. I can't wait to go on holidays with you to Greece next year. You owe me that one. And, no, uh, you and owe you me, have, dude. I owe you that one. I owe you that one. I owe you that one. <laughs> and you, you, to me, we, oh, every time we talk, whether it's on Facebook or whatever, on the phone, whatever, to me, you show that you have a super high emotional intelligence level because you put yourself in the shoes of that person who you're confronting. Definitely, big time. You're a mom as well. You have that experience as well. Uh, um, but can you give us an advice about how, like, like, if you don't have that or you don't use your emotional intelligence because you're not trained to do it, can you give us an advice? Can you give somebody an advice here on how to improve that, that thing to communicate better? Yes, uh, and it, it was learned over time, right? Yeah. And I also, I also read a book <laughs> when I, I was it. going through really hard times with my, I don't know, umpteenth fiance, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, 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 I love it. This is the variety show of the industry, Kerry, so I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was Crucial Communications When the Stakes Are High. That's the name oh. of the book. Okay. And yeah, it's important to learn it. Um, and for me, it's really important not to get upset or uptight, you know, um, and speak calmly and yeah. empathize with that person because you have no idea what they're going through. Yes. Um, yes. I've, I've been confronted in the past and it doesn't, I don't think behoove anyone to, to bring it back and give it back to yeah. that person, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really important, I think, to listen and absorb and even speak back to make sure that you understand what they are saying. Uh, I think difficult, you know, situations, difficult people are uh, difficult for a reason, you know, yeah, yeah, they probably yeah, yeah. don't feel listened to or they're frustrated or they had a shitty childhood, whatever. Yeah. Um, and just being the calmer person in the conversation or the meeting and even being a conduit to maybe yeah. help them bring their idea to management, whatever is going on, right, yeah. um, will only gain you a friend in the end. I, I love it. I love it. And I was thinking, you know, when you said about the put yourself in the shoes of others, I have a, I, I come from the north of Spain. It's, uh, it's the most beautiful part of Spain. I come from Oviedo. It's a very Christian Catholic backgrounded mm -hmm. society right so it's funny but to what to to me we still have a lot of this 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 thing of criticizing somebody and not putting yourself in the shoes just because of this christian catholic background of what is this person wearing a church on sunday kind of thing right and i'm not criticizing that but we have that in the background right so it took me time when i left over here 12 years ago now uh, to start thinking that when you know you know me you know that i'm the most optimistic person the most positive but I had to learn that thing. And I love what you just said right now. I, I just communicate. I mean, I just 
agree with you big time in that sister. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get to the next question because we, I want to take some 10 more minutes of us and then I want to just flash our reputation down the toilet, as I said, by the guys connecting their cameras <laughs> and their microphones because I see here my friend Michael, I see here my friend Kaloa, I see my dear Julia Greco, which I haven't seen in ages, Elizabeth here, I see Paige, Paige is amazing as well. And I want them to ask us, I mean, I want them to ask us a few questions for 20 minutes, right? So, uh, I mean, by the way, guys, if you want, yeah, Julia, if you guys want, <laughs> Uh, leave your questions there on the on the questions and answer uh, tab, so we can. I mean, once we get it, I will call my my buddy Andre, who's here behind the like moving the you know the the los hilos the the master of puppets. <laughs> my English is getting worse. Puppeteer, puppeteer. Yeah. yep, puppeteer, and uh, and uh, he's gonna connect you guys. He's gonna make you a presenter. You guys can turn on your cameras, your microphones. So if you're in pajamas, okay, just point up the part, the upper part, okay. We, I mean, we both in pajamas here, so it's fine. So no worries. <laughs> So the other question that I have for you is, uh, or, or let me put it into context. Sometimes you come up with a lot of new ideas that you like to implement, things that management have not thought of before, or you just simply see tasks out there that no one is doing. And then you say, like, I could take that task. I could do it. I could just uh, 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 do it better. Or, or just, you know, if I do these things, the company, the work is going to get positively impacted and move forward, right? Yep. Uh, so... Um, uh, how do you ask for more? Like, how do you come to a boss when there's a, level, a, a certain level of empathy with him? How do you come to him and tell him, hey, I want more. I want to do more because I think we can do this. And this, this is, a, this is a, 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 an important question. How, how would you come to a boss and tell him, hey, I need more responsibilities? And then I got another follow-up question for this one. So what is your take on this, Kerry? I have always armed myself with data. If yeah, you can show should. management what's missing, how you can fill that void and come prepared with data-driven facts, it's hard for them to say no. Although it's happened. Um, I have great stories, but um, you know, the, the same goes from for money. If you want to raise, right? There was, you know, back in the early days, there wasn't a lot of um, localization data around what everybody made, right? And you mm -hmm. sometimes kind of had to make it up. And I, I even did that at Subway, right? They didn't have anyone who managed localization before. And so I came in with my tears and said, here's where I should be based on my experience and level of responsibility. And they said, okay. <laughs> uh, I know that's I'm lucky. A, that's a, I know that's that's not normal, right? But yeah, yeah. That, that, that's I a great think, one. That's a great one. That's a great one. Oh, sorry, sorry to stop you though. So go No, on, I was going to say, if, you know, if the company is more established, um, my advice would be to ask what those tiers are. What are my tiers? Yeah. What are my salary tiers based on my level of responsibility? Um, Hyperion did that for us. And that made it easy to figure out where you should be. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're going to hit the top level of a tier and you got nowhere else to, to go, you are at least armed with the information that this is it. You know, you're not going to get a raise. You're not going to, you know, if you can't move up, you can't move on. Great. Yeah, then you've got yeah, that information yeah. to say, okay, let me start looking or, you know, okay, I'm yeah. okay with just getting bonuses or whatever the situation yeah. might be. Yeah, uh, that's, well, that's cool. That's cool. I see you. Look, I, I, you know, I'm a salesperson. I'm a sales manager. I've done sales. I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying to do it in a different way. Uh, and I'm trying to twist a little bit my, my, uh, to twist, I don't know, like to, to turn, to, not to twist, to turn around a little bit the way I approach sales. And it's working. I'm liking it. And uh, you know what I do worse, Gary? I am the worst negotiator in the freaking world. And I believe in love and I believe in the power of people. So I, I, I came into the job and I didn't even negotiate my salary because I had such a blind faith telling them like, I'm going to bring you results in such a little time that I'm, you're going to boom right away, give me the raise. And it happened like this. It happened like this, like this, like you, but that's not everyone's case, right? That might be a more uh, a, a company that squeezed you. yesterday. I was talking to Matt, my boss, and we were like, uh, this, I've been I've been in in, a comp in companies in which they squeeze you, they squeeze the shit out of you, until to get the biggest results, and they will not negotiate with you that. So both situations are super fine, and I love the answer that you give us about data because when you come with data, it's like boom, that's the data. No, 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 not a big, not a big thing. I love it. So audience, how you guys see it? Because you guys are going to be in control in the next in five six minutes, eh? So. Start thinking about your questions. Make sure that at least your hair is combed and, and that you have a t-shirt on. 
because we're connecting your cameras, okay? And Andra, my colleague, is there to do that, right? So in today's business culture, Kerry, you know, uh, uh, it comes a lot. I mean, today's business culture comes a lot with uh, pressure for results, and it makes a lot of sense. We're all in this to make a living. We're all in this for the business. We have these amazing relationships that we create, et cetera. But at the end, it, there's a lot of pressure for results, right? Mm. But a lot of times, not many, many times out there, there's, uh, there are projects that you know they can be big and they can give a huge result, but it's going to take 18 months or one and a half years or two years or whether it's 18 months is one and a half years. It's good, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a lawyer, sorry guys. Uh, it's going to it's gonna take, it's gonna take that, that, that much time. And then you have to go to your boss and tell him, man, you are not going to believe it, but if we want to work in this, it's going to take this time. How would you handle this situation, scary, in which you have to convince a boss with, as I said again, regardless of the level of empathy or, or relationship you have with him, how do you convince, how do you challenge a boss to tell him, dude, stop giving me the results, I mean, the, the daily pressure of that thing, because this is a long-term thing, we need to focus on the long-term thing. I'm a huge fan of transparency. Okay. Um, when you bring your peers and your managers into the loop on basic localization metrics and educate them, you make them feel informed and really part of the decision, right? Hey, it mm -hmm. takes one day for one translator to translate a thousand words, whatever it is. And that's why it takes this amount of time to translate this big project. We can add translators to the project that might speed it up. We might run into a higher risk of inconsistent mm -hmm. styles. Mm -hmm. Here's my recommendation. What would you like to do? Um, okay. And, and I also tell them how we can avoid stuff like this in the future, right? It, it, in my experience, it has come from people not understanding that they needed to engage me eight months ago. Yeah. And yeah. you get to the uh, point where, yeah, it's, it's like, oh, now it's time to translate. Here you go. And it's like, mm, nope, guys. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a, that's a very good answer. Like, so it all depends on the relationship and on the preparation and stuff, because I, I, you know me, I'm a pure Sagittarius, pure fire. I do things. And sometimes I lay back. It's like, I should have thought about that before. And I will do two times the same thing to make it work because I didn't think with, with preparation. And I love what you just said. So, and I have, and, and one more and we give the mic. Okay. So okay. I had this, I was talking about like, um, like one of the conversations that we always have with my friends, we're having drinks and, and I love to philosophize with them. And we talk a lot about um, why people don't do things because of fear for rejection. Like there's a lot of frustrated situations in life or there's a lot of people that get frustrated in life for fear of rejection, for not doing something, right? So, uh, uh, Taking into account that attitude, like how do you accept no from a boss? How do you tell them like, oh, what is your reaction when you say like, no, oh, but this is my life was in it. This was one of the coolest things I thought of and it's going to work big time. Enlighten us, Akari. Again, my last <laughs> company. It's funny because bodybuilding.com was the best company in terms of people. I loved working there. Um, but in Boise, Idaho, there's not a lot of global experience. So, mm -hmm. um, where I got to know almost every time was at that company. So, um, the localization oh. program died, you know, and I was put in charge of, um, global market research, payment providers, payment methods, which was a lot of fun. I loved that experience, but, um, I was asked to provide recommendations on where yeah. we should invest our resources, you know, and time in terms of the next market that we should enter. And I worked for months. I did the research. I created the presentations, created the recommendations for success in these markets. And every time I'd get the head nods, no. yeah, you're right. This is amazing work, but nothing ever happened. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. analysis paralysis, Somebody always knew better, um, even if they'd never traveled outside the US, it was just a brick wall. The yeah. focus always ended back up on how can we get the US business back from Amazon who had decided to focus on the bodybuilding supplement business? Mm -hmm. We're not, you know, yeah. and, and focus on where we can expand our markets, but the answer was always no. And 
when you're the expert and your recommendations go nowhere, yeah. it's because all the C levels are a no. Um, yeah. It was time to look elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, did that impact your, your, your morals? Like big time, you say like, oh my God, really? Because that, the, that frustration for rejection, for fear of rejection, sometimes makes us hate the boss and sometimes makes us like move on to the next thing. I didn't hate them. I felt sorry for them because they okay. had a chance to really grow this business, especially in China. It was just partnering with logistics, offering the currency um, and their payment methods. It's yeah. not rocket science. It's not difficult, but it was yeah. just like, oh my God, all these changes. And um, yeah. I just felt sorry for them. I really did. And they're not, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna say anything bad about them. <laughs> you can, you can, this is not the BBC. Don't forget our motto is this is not the BBC. British Broadcasting Corporation, so. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so ready? Ready to, to put our image on the floor now, Kerry? Because now yeah. it's time for you guys. We have another 20 minutes of the show today. And uh, I see a lot of friends here. And I'm going to go to the friends first because I want this first, this friends to ask us questions. And uh, mm. they're disappearing. No, no, don't disappear. Like, where are you? No. So, like, I'm seeing Kaloa here. And Kaloa is one of the people that I like the most in this industry and he's always active in every log life in every in every in every log lunch in all the community events Kaloa I mean if if you are dressed would you like to connect your camera and ask a question <laughs> like Ondra would you do us a favor if not even if you're not you, dressed even I mean if you're real. not dressed you can do it don't worry what wouldn't I do I can do anything you wouldn't leave us here you wouldn't just leave without saying <laughs> goodbye brother <laughs> Uh, that's awesome to be here. I was listening to Kerry. We had an opportunity to talk once and, um, fa not face to face, but it was a nice phone call. And, um, it is, it was interesting because at some point I, I send I send you an email and say, Hey, do you want to talk? And, uh, it was, it was really nice because, there was not that there wasn't much to talk, but there was queries. There was things that I want to share about what we are doing and how we are doing this. And she was so open to that, that uh, uh, encouraged me to call other people. And um, how, I mean, that wasn't like a cold call because I talked to you. I invited you to meet in the event that we were both attending yeah. and so we did on meet. And yeah we did meet that one time yep. yeah yeah and uh but how do you handle uh what what is your take for people that are out there hunting for uh new clients new opportunities and have something to offer actually and code call how what what is your answer for code calls I that's a good my, one it is a good one <laughs> Um, and I might be different than most, but I invite conversations and I like to hear what every LSP, no matter what their service or what they provide, I like to hear what they have to offer um, because you just, you never know when something is going to click, you've got an idea and maybe you need to bounce it off somebody. I find LSPs to be the best. Um, people to, to do that. Um, I will, you know, I think, as you know, I will always accept an invite for a call, yeah. um, coffee, drink, whatever. Right. Um, and if I can't provide, you know, the sale, I have recommended other clients to these LSPs that I think might be a fit. We are all in this industry together. And I yeah. want us all to be successful. Um, and that's the way you do it. You know, you, you give and you give back. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, know. I think, I think that's, 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 that's a good question. This should be more related to the boss talks guys. That's my fault. I didn't say it before. It's not just like that, but anyway, it's good. Like it's my fault, Kaloa, but it's good. Don't worry. So, um, but let me put it this way. Like, uh, like, uh, Imagine that, yeah, that we all do call calling. Oh, I mean, I, I don't do it anymore because I have this approach that is different, but it's really frustrating. And how do you come to your boss and tell him, fuck, I've been cold call calling all morning 
zero, zero things when there's pressure for results, for example. How do you take that? Like, what is your take on that? Kaloa, tell us. What did you think? What do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, my, 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 my boss just stopped asking me for code call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm bringing the results, but it's not through code calls. I mean, I, I can do that. I, I mean, if you know me, you know that I have, I have a code call that is not related to, to, to business, but it's like a, something really, really short, really short. Okay. I have, a, I have a, peop, a person that I know from TV in Brazil. I saw on Instagram that he was in Kiev and I was in Kiev. And I saw this guy in Kiev by himself. My sister, uh, she works on TV in Brazil, and she knows this guy. I call her and say, this guy is here. Put me in touch with this guy. Okay. Like famous, huge okay. famous in Brazil. All right. And she said, I'm going to do it. And I said, don't worry. I'm not going to make you feel bad or anything. Long you story say short. Say those things, Kaloa, please. Yeah, no. long, long story short. <laughs> Long story short, he called me. I was on a call with my boss. I couldn't take the call. I called him back and he picked up the phone. And before he realized that he was talking to someone that he never knew, we were like having lunch already in that day. So I can do that. It's something that I, I can go through a code call with no problem. Right, right. But I don't think that's the way I get the best results on the business side. I mean, okay. I can talk, but I, I rather have more information. And I think that email, I think LinkedIn, yeah. I think that there are many other tools nowadays. So when my boss asked me, why do we don't co call this person? Because I think if I sent some emails, I didn't say, I know that they read the email. I met them face to face. I don't think that a code call will make the difference. Okay. But Kaloa, I stop of... you there because we need we need to have more people participate. So <laughs> okay, you get it. Thank you, brother. Like bye -bye. Julia Greco. Like I want to talk to you. I haven't seen you in three three years. So if you are ready, we would like you to ask to come and ask us a question about management, <laughs> leadership, talking to your boss. Not only about cold calling. Okay. <laughs> so Julia is ready, brother. Can you make her a? Uh, uh, a presenter? She doesn't have a question. She says, <laughs> but she's gonna tell us. She's she, she, she she's she, being being Julia Greco is amazing. Being this Italian amazing girl living in Canada is amazing. So I know she's got questions to tell us for sure. I, hey! know, I know. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. Hello. Oh, good to I see you. It's cold. It's very cold. I mean, Canada, as you said. See, I have like half gloves, scarves. Oh, madre mia. <laughs> madre mia is right. <laughs> I love that. You came out just, oh, madre mia. That's right. <laughs> I'm freezing. It's cold. It's only the beginning. Well, How I are mean, you doing? Was, I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah. Well, good, I mean, good, I'm, good, sad, good. I'm sad all the time because of stupid yeah, pandemic and lockdown and pandemics. no travel and stuck oh. in Canada for over a year now. Uh, oh, my God. Year. I haven't been able to go to back home to Italy in, in over a year. So that makes oh. me all the time. And I miss traveling and I miss go to real lock worlds in person. Yes. And I miss going to events in person and eating snacks with people. <laughs> I miss having real coffee and beers and wine with people. Like all of that. I mean, this is, this is, the silver lining is that I am meeting a lot of people now and I'm like, oh, this afternoon I'm going to some San Diego lock lunch. And I'm like, well, of course I could yeah. Like, but I can because everybody's from all around the world and we can all do everything at the same yeah. time. But I do miss the real life stuff very, yeah. very badly. Uh, yeah, and I was going to say, I don't really have a question, but you were so eager to have me on that I'm you like, okay, I'm it. dressed. Uh, who am okay, I to so say then, no? Then let me do it the opposite way because if there's okay. something that I do well, it's improvising. So can I ask you a question, Julia? Because I know you're working on the, on the client you can, side. You can ask. I don't know if I will answer, but you yes. can always ask. Yeah. Can we learn more about her? There's a question saying, can we learn more about you since you're here? Or I have, I have another uh, thing, but okay, yeah. Let's tell us a little bit more. How does, a, how does an Italian, a super positive, full of energy girl get to live in Canada, get that job that you have? And, and give us a quick glance. You have five minutes. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So I was already in Canada 
we, before doing localization because I married a Canadian man. So ah, the, re- the only reason why an Italian would be in Canada is love. <laughs> why else? Because <laughs> I mean, the climate is <laughs> crap. The food is crap compared to Italy. I mean, why else, right? You got to do it for a good reason. That good reason is called Steven and he's married and he's upstairs right now. So all okay. good. There. <laughs> so, um, So then uh, I was in Canada for a while and I used to be a translator and an interpreter back in the days when I was young, um, when I still lived in Milano. Uh, Anyway, long story short, I applied to a job at Shopify, which is a Canadian company headquartered in Ottawa. They were looking for an Italian translator and I was like, there is nobody, nobody in the entire Canadian country that can do this job better than me. I was 100% sure. Like when I saw the job posting, I, it's like the light came down from the sky and illuminated <laughs> me. And I was like, this has been written for me. I am the person. I'm going to get the job. And I did. Sometimes you just get that instinct, right? You just know it within every fiber of your yeah. being. So yeah. anyway, I got in and within one week, I realized the job was not Italian translator. It was like, yes, Italian translator plus a lot of other things. Yeah. And that's how I started my career in localization, really. And I really learned everything on the job. I'm not going to lie. Like my background is as a linguist, is what in North yes. America we call linguist. Yes. Um, everything localization related, I learned it by doing. And yes, I am on the client side. And now I feel super guilty because I don't take cold calls. <laughs> so you guys that was, that was, that was actually a good question I'm, from Carlo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, my God, I'm a terrible person. I'm, I feel like Scrooge. <laughs> However, I will say the redeeming. <laughs> The redeeming thing that I'm going to say is that I do, I, I do give my time to students and people that are starting in the industry. So I'm like, can I make up for that? I'm not really Scrooge because I don't take call, call, business call calls, but I do help the beginners. So come on, give me a little more time. When I finish hiring my team, I'm hiring right now, I'll have a little more time and then maybe I will be more willing to yeah. respond to the several emails that I receive every day uh, me, me. from all sorts of vendors and I just ignore them. So apologies to whoever may have written to me and I never replied. I will keep on not replying for a while and then one day I will. <laughs> so just don't take it personally, please. Julian, I need to ask you now, like in your journey as an Italian living in, in Canada and working at Shopify, did you come across any boss that was really bitching you or you had some trouble or you saw, you, have you seen the limitations of any boss that you, and you can say it or not or mold it the way you want, but that has happened. That might happen. How have you faced um, complicated so, situations with the boss, for example? So in, in my career at Shopify and localization, yeah. not, not so much. People have been very uh, respectful. What I have encountered was a lead, a boss uh, before my current boss who is amazing and has a lot of localization experience and is yeah. fantastic, best boss I've ever had. Before him, I had a boss who knew nothing about localization. So my team was placed under him. He did content marketing and they decided yeah. they could just tack on international content marketing to his portfolio. The yeah. guy was totally out of his depth. So we were, kind, me and my colleagues, I, I and my colleagues were kind of like leading him and trying to teach him. So okay. in a way he was very, um, he was very accommodating. Like he wouldn't fight us because he couldn't, he didn't know how to fight us. Like he just didn't have the tools to understand what the heck we're yeah. talking about. The problem was that he wasn't very good at learning and he wasn't interested in learning. And that that was sad because I thought this is a great opportunity for you to become a better, you know, professional all in all. And and he was just totally uninterested. And I don't think he valued what we did properly. That's the problem when you're dealing with somebody. Did it frustrate you? Did it frustrate you? The fact that we weren't we weren't valued, we were always a team that were, you know, you feel like the least favorite child. Like they were like a few teams under him, and we were like the forgotten ones in the corner doing multi-language stuff. And we're like, I mean, come on, people. And then once a year we would gather all together and everybody's presenting and it's super boring. Then we show up and we're like, oh, okay, so you do. (laughs) You are a team of seven people doing one blog in English and publishing twice a week. We're each a team of one person per language. We publish four times a week. Plus, we do translations. We do our own page. We do email marketing in language. Blah, blah, blah. And the rest <laughs> of the team was like, they were like, what? Oh, we're like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. So it felt a little, 
Uh, we're not in that position anymore, though. So now we're we're feeling valued and properly okay. supported, and and so that's so. That's so you've been nice. you've you've been through the thing. I, it's it's. I mean, I, I I'm I'm I I like to hear these things because you know we've all been through these things. Me, I'm now the luckiest guy ever because I have an amazing manager. I'm not going through this stuff at this point, right? And I'm taking a lot of things that I'm doing when he doesn't ask me to do to help the team, right? Julia, thank you. I need another more person because we have for me. It's You're amazing. Welcome. We need to have an online coffee these days and catch up. Okay? Yes, we should I'll for sure. Out. Okay, Richard, I'll respond to your call calling. You, yes, <laughs> I'll reach out to I'll reach out. I will respond to you, Harry. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Be Thanks the next for one. I have I have two two people in mind. I don't know if Esther, mi amiga Esther Curiel, she wants to come in. Like if not, you can say it now, otherwise you're gonna be turned into a into a into a a host. And you can ask a question to Carrie, to me, about boss leadership, etc., like that. Or you can contribute to the conversation that we've been having anyway. So if you don't, if you are gonna say no, say it now, my dear. Put it in the chat or not, or you'll be you'll be turning to into that. And then we we're gonna have a little bit a little bit more time, maybe for Elizabeth Elizabeth Butters, who I love her as well. She's in London. So can we turn instead into a into a, a yes, sir. <laughs> so let's give five minutes. Esther is amazing. Esther is, is amazing. She, she's That's so cool. That's the first time you've ever been called sir, I bet. Yes. Yes. And the last time. And the last time. <laughs> Esther is a Spanish, is a Spanish localization professional living in Ireland. And uh, she's got a beautiful story. And I hope she has one of her Pocoyo uh, backgrounds now on when she turns the camera on. I don't know if she's going to be able to have one of those, but her backgrounds on Zoom are amazing. Oh, Harry, just to say, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. I'm, I'm having awful connectivity problems today. Big issues with the, the internet. We're on to the provider, changing the oh. router today. So I'm on my phone. I'm not even sure that's going to stay very... It's okay. It's great. It's great. It looks great. Stable. Don't worry. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, you're going home okay. for Christmas or not. It's the holidays now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... We were, you followed the conversation. I know you came, I saw you there. I, I saw. I came in very late, so I've missed most of it. I don't know what has been discussed already. No? So let me ask you, let me ask you a question then, because I know you're a manager there and you are a boss. Travel. You, yeah, let me put you in travel then. Oh, oh no, God. No, I won't do, I won't do that. I'm connecting with the issues now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but let me, let me, let me ask a question. Like, it's an easy one. Uh, how do you create rapport with your team members? Like, do you do like, uh, like, or can you give us some advice on how to create proper rapport with the uh, with team members for those of, of us here listening that might be leading teams, etc. Right? And you're very yeah. good at that. And now your connection is stable and amazing, and you look great. Huh? So, <laughs> by the way, Esther is working for Indeed.com. She's one of the localization lead managers in Indeed.com. Okay, I didn't say that. Sorry. Yes. Okay, how to build rapport? Uh, I suppose it's just, uh, I mean, empathy, like uh, show empathy and take time to get to know the team um, and try and make some, uh, like today actually, uh, like, you know, I, I don't know if I'm the best person at this because I'm often very focused on, okay, <laughs> we need to discuss business and everyone's very busy so there isn't much time for everything else. But we've been doing a couple of things, uh, you know, lately to kind of help with the, and how remote everyone is feeling from the others, you know, with the whole working from home thing and so on. Um, apart from kind of coffee mornings and things like that, like this morning we changed the, the usual team meeting into a just a quiz um, for yeah. all of us. Um, yeah. One of the team members actually volunteered to prepare it and was just with questions about other team members that, you know, um, some people might or might not know. Um, and uh, it was very well done, like with uh, kind of funny pictures and uh, funny questions yeah. and so on. And it's just, uh, we did a previous session as well for people to just talk about themselves and yeah. kind of uh, what they like or not, you know, uh, ambitions, funny things they've done in the past and so on, kind of outside of the work thing. Yeah. Um, and then also talk as well about things that they might be, they might have a certain specialization in. The, the team is actually very, um, like it's not all linguists, it's a bit of a mixture that was on purpose. So that means, you know, like some people bring experiences that others might not have had yeah. professionally as well as outside of that. So just, I suppose, building the, the space for those kind of yeah. conversations, that helps an awful lot, I think. Yeah. So and, a lot of uh, exercises. Yeah, that, and, just, uh, 
I love it. So one of the topics we need to discuss here definitely is empathy. Like I need a, I need somebody to come in here and discuss about empathy because to me empathy is is something that is 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 key to self development as a professional as a person, and it's not used that much, right, Kerry? What do you think? I completely agree. Yes, 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 yes. Esther, thank you very much. You know I love you. You're a great friend. Thanks for your contribution. Like it's already finished, but like I don't want to leave the I don't want to leave without Elizabeth asking us a question and then we're gonna leave it for the day today was like a little bit experimental i know this goes like to get the full experience in this program people should uh, log into into zoom so we can ask the questions and turn you into 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 a speaker but uh this is also being distributed around linkedin facebook and, and uh, is that right i mean linkedin facebook through uh through the nimsi and multilingual channels there so yeah elizabeth we need you to turn the camera and the microphone on I love it. I love it. Thanks for um, having me. Um, yeah, so my question was, um, what about education? So let's say you wanted to learn something um, new. Do Does this really happen in localization? Like one of my friends works at the parliament and as part of her um, employment, um, she's doing a degree in psychology, which is 25% paid for by her employer. And there's going to be a new role created for her in diversity and inclusion afterwards. No. Do we ever see anything like this in localization? Carrie, what do you think? You are in women in localization. Elizabeth is also there. What do you think? I mean, I, let me just, I, I'll, I believe in that big time, big time. That's one of the mottos, one of the reasons why mm -hmm. I created the, the Lock Life community, which is building, yes. Yes. which is it's, it's, on the, it's on the creation, right? And I believe in inclusion and communities being the most important thing for the future as a professional, okay. as a business development manager, as a localization manager, as a head of localization, because that's where the opportunities for, for, you know, for development come, right? So I believe it's key. Education can be also given through communities as well. And you carry are a, an amazing figure for women in localization doing that. So if you have any, any advice for, for Elizabeth? It almost, you know, so before I was a, a member of women in localization. That's not true. I, it was just being formed, right? Um, someone came to me out of the blue, wasn't in the localization industry at all, um, wanted to get into it, really liked it, felt it was her, her calling. <clears throat> and she came to me and, and I knew within probably 10 minutes what she was capable of, right? And she's just amazing. Um, the best thing I could do was introduce her to people who were hiring and who were willing to train her. Um, and she ended up owning her own translation company at one point, and now she works for AWS. I think it's, you know, it's also a matter of connection and mm -hmm. being willing to um, listen to somebody mm -hmm. who needs help and mm -hmm. pointing them in the right direction. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then yes, I mean, women in local <clears throat> absolutely. I hopefully, you know, with global community coming online, um, mm -hmm. We really want to offer a lot of educational series to those who want, mm -hmm. you know, in localization industry training. Um, so, yeah, I see it. I see it up and coming. But I think the most important thing is to be a conduit and be a connection mm -hmm. for others. Do you think and this is I think this is very related to to what we've been discussing today for the last 45 minutes, right? Or 50. So we're going to we, we're going to have to say bye in a second. Uh, do you think that managers, bosses, uh, are spending enough time in uh, in in training us as we should be trained, or do you think that managers hire us because of what we are? Like this this quote from Steve Jobs, right? Like they would say, like we are not hiring here people to to what is it like to to we hiring people to tell us what to do, right? Something like that, right? What do you think? Do you think that they are spending enough time, or that we should come into a role because we are paid for that? What do you think? Or there's an in between? I don't know. What do you think, Kerry? I always hire Tough people one. that- I love it when you breathe in and then breathe out. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I always hired people that were um, different or better than me in many areas. I know my weaknesses. I know what I lack. And I would hire people to come in and then we could teach each other, right? We could build mm -hmm. those skill sets. Um, I don't know if a manager has ever trained me uh, 
they have in some respects, right? And they've trained me maybe in what not to do. <laughs> uh, you can learn a lot just by ob- yeah. observing what others do, right? And go, yeah. oh my God, what a terrible experience. I will never do that to anybody else. Um, yeah, that's... I have this thing, like, like, you know, one of the crazy things that I do all the time, I come to my boss and I tell him, dude, don't tell me what I do good. Tell me what I do bad. And you can go yeah. and ask him, dude, yep. don't, I, I know what I do good. I know what I'm best at. I know all of these things that I'm tired of people telling me that I do good things. I want you to tell me what I'm doing bad for fuck's sake. Right. So by the way, Elizabeth, what do you think about the quote of the, of the, of the webinar or of the series, the program being, this is not the BBC. You are a British uh, citizen, so can you give us your opinion on that? Um, yeah, well, relevant, of course. Um, <laughs> definitely funny. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So thank you. Very- Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. I mean, we would love you guys to send us some, uh, some feedback on what you saw today. We're experimenting. We need to create a platform for us to talk about things that, I mean, I'm doing it on my end, on my community, at my work. But we need to create a platform like this for friends in localization to come here and talk and discuss about things that, you know, that are, are interesting. Like today we wanted to discuss a bit about the, uh, how we face management, how we come to our boss and say, oh my God, you are terrible. You're doing what you're doing right. Or, or, or the opposite or telling that you're amazing and, and how to build a relationship with your boss, right? So we want to continue talking about these kind of things that are not localization process related, but are life related, professional and, and self and, and personal related things. Right? So please send us suggestions. We would like to get feedback. I'm sure the colleagues will get in touch to ask you for feedback and be good, be kind, be bad, because we want to know what we do bad, not only what we do good, right? So Carrie, my dearest Carrie, Princess Leah of the localization industry, I love you so much. Thank you very much for this. Thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody. Welcome. Carrie, bye-bye. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Adios. <laughs> bye everybody. Adios. Hasta luego.